What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. We're going to install a Fusion SE. Go through the install, calibration, automatic motor pairing, as well as what all the cool settings do. I'm going to put that into this sweet Element RC. I uh, believe it's the Senduro, the original one. Element sent me one of these years ago because Brad Geck is awesome. And it's been in the fleet ever since. It's one of my favorite loaner trucks. It currently has the Fusion 1800 KV, the original Fusion that ever came out. The Fusion SE is all of that in a simplified shorter can and a much, much lower price point now. It has all the same settings too. So if you have an original Fusion, the programmer box will work with that otherwise these do come with a little sticker that you can put on your programmer box we're gonna pop the receiver box open take the gear cover off and then we'll get to installing here we'll All right, so that is an original Fusion. It's several years old. This is the new Fusion, and you can see there, when I line these up, let's get these guys even, you can see how much shorter the new Fusion SE is now. So you get a little bit of space savings, and you get basically the same specs. It is available on a 1200 and an 1800 KV. Speed control, BEC, all those ratings are all pretty much the same. Um, the difference in the cost savings comes down to this sweet new can design. Well, with this being a lower KV, and I mean, really, the only reason I'm putting the 1200 kV in is because this is what I have right now. Um, I'm a big fan of the 1800 kV, but if you are you have a 1200 and you want a little bit more wheel speed, they will run a lot bigger pinion gear than what the 1800s do as far as still being crawlable, still having plenty of runtime. This I'm going to leave with this pinion gear because this is more of a loaner truck that we give to the kids or the folks who haven't driven RC much at all or maybe late at night. And the lower speeds and all that kind of help keep things in check, a little you know, better experience and tons of runtime. Like so something that is unique to FOC systems, field oriented control, which is this different style of sensor systems that the Axe R2s, the original Axes, um, the Fusion Pro and the Fusion SE, as well as the original Fusions, they have a closed loop sensor system and it does require some basic calibration and that is built into the speed control the tricky part is is you have to have the pinion gear removed from the motor or at least not touching the spur gear and then you want to unplug it from the receiver you plug the battery pack in and then you just long and long press the button until it starts to do its automatic motor pairing process or what i lovingly call the sensor reset so you can kind of see the motor there so i'm going to hold this down starts to blink you keep holding it down it's like 10 15 seconds type of thing when it turns green you can then let go and the motor's running real slowly right now like you can barely but it is take my word for it it runs at one rpm and then another rpm it does a couple little blinks and then automatic motor pairing is done there's running again now it's spinning a little faster you can kind of see that right still running real and it's important not to have any load on here when it's doing this i'm just barely touching it now it's stopped again spools up one time it blinks rapidly and it goes back to red blinking and that's automatic motor pairing when you do a mo new motor install i've seen plenty of comments that people put a new system and they're like oh it's really loud the motor itself really doesn't make any noise if you take a motor and you run on the bench it doesn't make any sounds and any of that like grindy gear raid gear i want to say gear sound usually comes from the pinion and the spur gear being a little bit off or at least different than what it was when you had the other motor in there so my general rule of thumb with gear mesh and especially in a crawler is that you want the least amount of play that you can have and still have some play between the gears and the easy way to set gear mesh is you take a thin piece of paper like a sales receipt or notebook paper you slide it between the gears slide the motor in there snug it up roll the paper out and that's about where you want to be i like to go a little bit tighter than that if i can just to help keep the gears lasting a little bit longer the more teeth that you have in contact the less they wear on each other i guess is the easy way to think about it got the new fusion se installed and gonna get the wires ran there's one wire that goes into the receiver box for the throttle channel and then you get this nice long switch wire so you can put the switch wherever you want the way i had the previous fusion in here i had the switch wire 
the extra, the excess wire of the switch harness snuck into the receiver box and let's see if I can make that happen again because that looked pretty clean. And then if you've not done installs before, the steering is always number one, the throttle is always number two, unless you have some sort of radio where you can reassign what the channels do. But general rule of thumb is one is steering, two is throttle on almost all radios by default. So all I did was run the extra bit of wire into the receiver box to make it a little cleaner. Now that we have the installation complete, we can do basic setup. And for the most part, after you do the install, all you should re really have to do is calibrate it and then maybe make a couple setting changes depending on which direction things go. If when you finish the calibration, you give it throttle and the vehicle drives reverse, you're gonna wanna make sure that you change the speed control setting, not the radio setting to correct that. But we'll get into that here in just a second. So calibration process is pretty much the same for any of the speed controls. If it's a single button that just has the power button, it's a long press and hold to get it to start blinking. And it usually happens within a few seconds and that you let go and that starts the calibration process. If you have a set button and a switch, you hold down the set button and then turn it on or tap the power button. This guy is a single button only, so it's very simply a long press to get it started. And don't forget, turn your radio on. We get a lot of problems because you forget to turn your radio, or oh, I forget to turn my radio. Uh, so long press and hold. It'll start to blink. And then you let go. It's beeping at you. Tap it to set neutral. Apply full throttle. Tap it again, that sets full throttle. Press and hold reverse tap. So it beeps once, twice, three times. It does a couple blinks after that, and then it is ready to go. You can pick the vehicle up and apply some throttle. Now, I give it throttle, and it's maybe hard to see in the video, but as I give it throttle, the wheels are moving backwards. So we're gonna get our programmer out and make some setting changes. So the Quick Run series of speed controls, including this Quick Run Fusion SE, they all work with any of the LED program cards. These are all exactly the same other than the stickers that are on them. So they just display what's inside of the speed control's brain. It doesn't put the settings that are in the sticker into the speed control. So if you have one from a different speed control, you can use it on any of the speed controls. You just have to reference the instruction manual for your speed control. There's gonna be a chart in there that has the numbers that tell you what all those settings mean. I am fortunate that I have several boxes and the Fusion SE has the same settings as the original Fusion, so we can just use that box. But if I didn't have this box, I could just use the instruction manual and the chart that's in there. On these Fusion SEs, the program port is in the end of the switch. It is marked. You can see some funny little sim symbols on there. There's a negative, a plus, and a squiggly. That is so you know which way to plug these guys in because it does in fact matter. So. The main thing that we want to do in, is go in and change the motor rotation, but as we go through the menus, we'll talk about what each of those do. So you turn the speed control on, you get the lights, and then the numbers pop up. So setting number one is the RPM throttle matching. You can have that enabled or disabled. And what that is, it's the FOC, essentially. The one-to-one -one ratio where the motor doesn't want to stall when you go going up a hill, you can disable that and it'll start to stall a little bit when you go up hills, if that's what you're into. Some people really like the one-to-one -one feel, some people want to turn that off and on, so you can do that here. Uh, next setting is your LiPo cells. It defaults to auto, so if you can run a two cell or a three cell, this system runs two or three cell. It'll if you always run one or the other, you can leave it set to the correct setting if you want to. It, it really doesn't make a huge difference. I run mine on auto all the time. Uh, next one is your voltage cutoff. And you can see there it's, it says low, intermediate, and high for the different voltage cutoffs. And what that is, is the level of the voltage per cell. So low is gonna be like 3.3-ish per cell. Intermediate will be probably closer to 3.5, 3.6 per cell. And then high is usually 3.7 per cell every time. And the reason there's no numbers there is because the depending on the plugs, the battery pack conditions, temperature even, those numbers aren't gonna match by the time you get it back onto the charger. And it makes people think the speed control's broken when it's not, but you know, so we took out the numbers and put in words. Uh, value or item number four, is the thermal protection. I always leave that on by default to the lower setting just in case. Setting number five is the one that controls motor rotation and that is the forward motor rotation. So right now it's set to counterclockwise for what would be a standard transmission vehicle. A lot of crawlers like these have backwards transmissions or backward drivetrain. So we're gonna switch that by hitting value to number two for clockwise so that when we give a throttle, the motor goes forward and you hit okay to save to make sure that you make your setting change. BEC voltage is the next one, number six. 
and that allows you to set it to 6 or 7.4 volts. And then we have our drag brake force. So this is how strong the brakes are at neutral. In a rock crawler, when you let off the throttle, it applies the brakes. This allows you to change how strong those brakes are. I like to leave it pretty much in the middle. You don't need a ton of brakes. These things have such strong brakes anyway. But the next one, value number eight, which is our drag brake rate, is a lot of fun to play with. This controls how quickly the speed control applies the drag brake. So think of it as when you were to push on the brakes in a vehicle, how quickly you'd, you'd smash on the brakes. I like to run this very low, like down in setting number one or two, because when you're going fast and you let off the throttle, it applies the brakes slowly and you don't get that real herky-jerky stop. With this vehicle, it's probably not going to make any difference. It goes so slow anyway, but... And then value number nine is your max reverse force. Some people don't like full speed reverse because they're not real good at operating the opposite side of the throttle. So turning that down here can make the reverse a little bit smoother for you for the fine movement. So you can never really give it full reverse. After nine, it goes back to number one and you are good to go. But as you make changes, if you hit OK, it makes the save right away. And that's all there is to that. You turn off the speed control, lights go out, you unplug this. And don't forget to plug your little rubber doohickey back in because if you get any moisture inside the switch, it's going to be a real bad time. So now that we made those setting changes, uh, we can double check that the wheels now go the right direction. This is front of the truck over here. We give it some throttle and it goes forward. So here, this is the blazing speed of the 1200. Rock crawl. But it will get hours and hours of runtime. I'll put the gear cover back on, of course, but you can see it's, it's I mean, it's pretty quiet. Most of all that that you hear, I mean, pretty much all of that is just normal drivetrain sounds that RC cars make. Get that switch buttoned up with some tape, put the gear cover back on, and this guy will be ready for some super mega long runtime action. I do like to remind everybody that we have a podcast that we do the first and third Friday of every single month, and we give away a free Hobbywing system. The name of the podcast is RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. Just look for us on your favorite podcast service, listen to an episode, and find out how to enter to win. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, we invite you to send us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. We'd love to read the comments, but we're not able to do a lot of the direct answers there. So if you have questions for us, just email us, and we're happy to get you sorted out with some answers from the right people. Again, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Well, folks, as always, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you joining us here on The Charlie Show, new every Tuesday, right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel.